<laughs> yes, ma'am, quickly. Speak up. I run a business that um, facilitates um, dating tournaments. So oh. I work with companies that want to invest in community development. So um, I have two questions. I have a friend and we run the business together. So I wanted to ask, how do you know how much your business is worth? Is working? Especially when you're young and you're working with big companies, how do you know how much your, um, your business is worth? Yeah. And secondly, I want to ask, um, in the face of adversity, how do you gain discipline of your money? Like for example, now that I think the nicest thing about about being an entrepreneur, I'm quite nervous. Um, I think the nicest thing about being an entrepreneur is that you get money easily in your in your account. So I come from a college, right? So when I go home, there's that I get that my I would say, um, we've run out of shoes or something like that. So I want to know how do you gain control of your finances and. Especially when you have, you're still young and you have money in your, into your account. So how do you not say, oh, okay, I have like fifty thousand rand in my account, and how yeah. do I not buy a board from Converse or something like that? Yeah. I'm gonna, your question is the easiest to answer. It's the way you're asking the question that's incorrect. It's not your account. It's the business's account. <laughs> so you know there is there's there's a reason. That's not a clapback. That's a fact. There's a reason when you create a company, you go to the CIPC and you register it. It's because by law, a company is a juristic entity like you. It has a life. It's a human being. It exists. And in effect, what you're doing is you're, you're drawing its blood supply to keep you alive. You're, you're committing murder. You just won't go to jail for it. But you might end up at, at a sequestration or liquidation court, right? So your question is, but it's very important, which is the business is there. The money is there. How do I make sure I don't kill it? The answer is actually not that complex. You've got to have a way of separating you from the business. Yeah. The, here's a comment earlier. So, right, so I have a person who does the finances in the business. Every month I get a list of people to pay salaries. One of them is my name. And I pay me a salary. It's hard, eh? <laughs> You're like, but there's... A <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but you've got to do it. Uh, otherwise, if you don't introduce that discipline, you'll always be employed. You'll never be an entrepreneur. Okay. The second question was around how do I create value in my business? How do I know how to price my business? Do you know what is the best price for your business? It's expensive plus one. When the customer says, ooh, it's expensive. Yeah, take that, add one. That's the price. <laughs> Remember, expensive is nothing more than the layperson's way of saying I can't afford it. Okay, so you're not, you're not always expensive. You're just not targeting the right people. Yeah? So what I'm saying to you is, how do you know where to value your business? There are a couple of ways to do it. Check what other people do, do what you do. See, see what the average price is, et cetera, et cetera. But then you've got to make a decision about what you think is the value of what you do, and you've got to stand by it. Through the winters, we increased my price in South Africa this year, I think, by 25%. In a market where people are losing jobs and the, and the economy is in technical recession, you're increasing price by 25%? Yeah. Is it negotiable? No. <laughs> and we stand by it. And if a customer comes and says, we want you, but, and I go, uh, I'm so sorry, how much did you want to pay? Oh, uh, but they want to pay, will you do it? Stand by the integrity of your price, right? There's a, a video I did that went viral. When somebody walks into Lamborghini and says to Lamborghini, it's expensive. Lamborghini will tell them, how do you know? And they'll say, because Toyota is X price. They'll tell you, Lamborghini, go buy a Toyota. Okay. Did that land for you? My man, great. Uh, two more. Uh, there was one here at the front, and then we'll end with you, ma'am. This, this, this young lady. Great. We're ending with ladies. Fantastic. How are we doing, guys? We're good? Yeah. Great. Yes, ma'am. Hi, guys. My name is Nosipo Mohana, and I'm also from Groups. Um, for me, it's just advice that I need. I'm, I'm a fashion designer, aspiring yet. So I have a child, so I couldn't do fashion full-time, and it's not available in Cape Town part-time, so I decided to do retail, and during the time I was working in call centers. Mm -hmm. But what I do daily, I take two hours of my time to practice my skill. One of the things that I've learned is this jacket that I have on today. Very nice. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll see you, we we'll see you. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, um, a few years ago, I was scared to like, quit my job and do what I want to do. Like now that I'm older, and I, I know I can do this, and I know I can make my business stand, 
And there's also a niche that I'm targeting, which is church uniforms, which I think in Cape Town, I don't, I've never seen like a business that is doing that. Very nice. Exactly. So I'm thinking of going into that as my thing that I want to like have make money from and then study at the same time. But now um, I, I am a bit scared, scared to just um, jump, leave yeah. my work because yeah. I've got a 12-year-old that is yeah. going to high school in a few years. Yeah. So I just need advice exactly. No, it's a great what question. What should I do in that case? I know what I want to do. However, how do I do it? And you also mentioned an app that is able to show you mm. Mm. like business cards and what mm. you'll need to do. Also, I need uh, information on that. But yeah. like, my business needs like branding. Great. That's the most thing that I've Got you. So um, first, thank you for being honest. Yeah? That's, it's a very brave question to ask, which is I want to, I think I'm capable, but I'm scared. <laughs> let, me, let me just share with you from personal experience. The fear, the fear never goes away. You just learn to live with it. Yes. It's a bit like, I think it's a bit like being, I think it's a bit like being a professional fighter. You know, I don't think professional fighters ever not get nervous before a fight but there is a way you learn to use that energy for you, right? I don't wanna give you advice and I'll tell you why, because I, I cannot in good conscience stand on the other side of the journey that life has for you. That's not my place. Here's what I can tell you for free. It's gonna be much harder than you think. It's gonna take much longer than you think. And you're gonna suffer much more than you expect. But there will be nothing worth it more. Yes. So what, what, you've got to decide, what you've got to decide for yourself is do you want to be the person you want to be? Because <laughs> you want to be it, but do you want to be that person? Right? There's a... You know, there's, there's a reason you go through. Life is fascinating. Life incubates you for the thing you're doing, right? So the suffering for me is just an incubation. Like if, if I remove the suffering from success, you lose character. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why you suffer. It's because it's, it's to give you depth and character. So that, so that when you, you know, that's why older, older is wiser, because they look at stuff and they go, I've seen this before. There's a beautiful Swahili proverb. They say, what an old man can see, seated under the shade of a tree, youth standing on top of the tree wouldn't see coming. And that's just about life and experience. So the journey you have to go through is life that's going to teach you, but it's going to give you depth and character. The question you have to answer for yourself is, do you want to be who you are? Or do you want to be who you are becoming?